Okay, today we're going to do some printmaking and we're going to be using cool colors. So you can see on one side of the color wheel we have warm colors. So colors like pink and reds, oranges, yellows, those are warm colors. The other side of the color wheel we have greens and blues and purples. So those are our cool colors. You can find warm colors in a fire or in the sun, hence why it's called warm colors. You can find a lot of cool colors in the ocean or cold places like where there's snow. Last week we learned how to cut paper snowflakes. What we're going to do this week is we're going to make a print and make some backgrounds for some snowflakes that we're going to draw next week. So we're mostly going to be experimenting and exploring some printmaking techniques with markers. First things first, before we start printing, take your piece of paper and you'll want to write your name on it. Before you make any print, make sure your name is on the back. So to start, you'll need a piece of tin foil and you'll need some washable markers. And then you're going to pull out all of the cool colors and I'm just gonna set aside the warm colors. So go ahead and choose one of your cool colors to start with. And you're just going to color on top of the tin foil. So I'm using the side of my marker so I'm getting big bold marks so I can fill in as much area as possible, as quickly as possible. So you can do this all the same color or you can do it in patches or in stripes or whichever way floats your boat. So we are making what's called a print. So what we will do is we're laying down this color and then later we're going to take a piece of paper and get it wet and we'll lay it on top and it will pick up all that color. Notice I'm trying to make this about as wide as my paper because I want it to fill in the background. So other prints that you might be familiar with, types of printmaking, um, it's just a simple stamp. If you've ever used a stamp before, that's a form of printmaking. Last year we used some styrofoam and that's another type of printmaking when we kind of carved into the styrofoam. There are lots of different kinds. Today we're, we're making what's called a monoprint, which means we can only make one print out of this. So we're laying down the ink um, on this tin foil, and then when we put the paper on it, we'll, there will only be one print of its kind. Now with a stamp, you can make multiple prints, and you can get the same image, roughly, um, multiple times. So these prints are going to be one of a kind. Okay, once I have all of my ink on here and it's filled up roughly the size of a paper, I am ready to do some printing. So I'll grab my piece of paper. Then I'm going to take a spray bottle that's filled with water and I'm just going to mist over the paper. You don't want your spray bottle squirting at it, you want a nice even mist if you can get it, but you want it wet enough that it's going to be picking up some of this ink. So I'll grab my tin foil, I'm going to put this paper face down, wet side facing down onto the tin foil and centering it over that ink. And I'm just going to push and rub lightly with my fingers. You'll notice this paper is already grabbing a lot of that pigment and it's creating a really interesting texture. So it'll be fun to see what it looks like on the other side. If you want to be extra sure that all of that ink makes it to the other paper, what you can do is you can turn it over and just gently rub on the tin foil. You want to be gentle because if you're rough with it, you might tear the tin foil or your paper. So once you think you've rubbed it enough, just go ahead and peel it off and voila! We have a beautiful print and you can see that water has made some really cool textures. Okay, now it's important when you finish printing, don't throw away your tin foil because you can use it again. You'll notice I have some leftover marker here that I need to clean off before I start coloring again. So what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll get it wet. And here I've got a bowl of water next to me. You might have a cup of water or you could just use your spray bottle. And, ooh, that's kind of pretty, huh? You'll just go ahead and wipe off all that extra color on your tin foil. And when you finish wiping it off, it's also important that you take a dry piece of paper towel afterwards and you wipe off all the extra water because you don't want to be coloring with your marker on a wet piece of tin foil. It's just not good for the marker. Okay, I'm going to do a second print, so I'm coloring in with markers again. Now, you might be wondering, Miss Rachel, I'm at home and I don't have a spray bottle, so how am I supposed to do this project if I don't have a spray bottle? Well, you can take a bowl of water, and if you have a sponge in your house, 
you can do this printmaking project with a sponge. So what I'll do is I'll grab my sponge, I'll get it wet, and I want to make some room. <laughs> I'm going to grab my paper. Um, it's important that you wring out the sponge. You don't want it to be too wet, but you also want to leave enough water so that you can get enough water on your paper. So once I've wrung that out, I'm just going to drag my sponge across my paper. Okay, now I need to work quickly. I don't want much time to pass because this water might evaporate and dry up. So I'm going to immediately face it down, wet side facing the tin foil, and I'll rub just like I did with the other one. Okay, I'm just going to flip this over and take this paper off. And this one fell right off. It was a little more dry, not as sticky as the other one. And because of that, it made a different texture, and I really like that. I like that it's different than the other technique. Because my paper was dry enough, it left some residue on the tin foil, so I think I can get a second print out of this. So I'm going to grab another paper, and remember if you're in the classroom, please, please, please write your name on the back of your paper before you start printing. That way we don't get it mixed up with someone else's. Okay, so I'll flip this over. I'll get it wet again, and let's see if we can get a second print. And there we have it. This is interesting. I think I like this more than the first print, actually. Let's try something a little different this time. I have a solid background I've colored in. And this time I'm going to take my snowflake that I cut out last week. And I'm going to lay it on top. You don't have to use a snowflake. You can use a different cutout shape of paper if you like. So I'm going to prep my paper and print this and see what it looks like. All right, I like how that turned out. That was fun. I used the sponge technique on this one, so I like that texture. It did leave a little snowflake pattern behind on my tin foil. So it looks like there's no ink on this snowflake. It was pretty dry, but I wonder if I could get another print out of this tin foil. This time I think I'm gonna try using a spray bottle. I wanna see what it looks like if I spray some water on here and try to get another print. All right, didn't quite work the way I was hoping. It has an interesting texture, but I think the sponge technique would have been better to pick up a more clear image of that snowflake. But that's what experimenting is about, right? So today, when you're making your prints, I hope you experiment and explore. It's okay to make mistakes. This is a time to try new things and see what happens. Make sure you let these dry and hold on to them for next week because we will use these to draw on top of for next week. So I'm excited to see how they turn out.